Hi, my name is Edie DeVilbis. I am a pastor here at Travis Park Church. My career as a pastor was spent in Louisiana at a children's home that was multi-level. We worked with adolescents between 11 and 17 years old, and I got to be their chaplain. About 30% nationwide of young people who are in foster care self-identify as LGBTQ. Why such a high percentage? Because we know that six to seven percent of the nation will self-identify with those designations. Why so many in foster care? So we looked into it and there are multi-levels of reason. One of them is a lack of acceptance from their own families. Another is a lack of acceptance in their own hearts. One of the most tragic things that I observed and experienced was hearing the kids' stories, uh, young people who had been incredibly damaged by their own pastors, by their own churches, and then hearing from their parents the stories of being shunned and dismissed if they did not want to reject their children. I'm curious, how would that be following Christ? That doesn't make sense to me. And I'm not sure that the scripture actually says that this is a sin. Um, the way I understand the Old Testament passages that are used to point this out or like the Sodom and Gomorrah story, in my understanding of the Hebrew scripture, that story is more about hospitality. It's about how the community was treating the angels who came to visit. And it was not pretty. It was not pleasant. It wasn't just that men were planning to have relationships with, not relationships, but planning to impose themselves on their guests. It was that this is completely wrong to treat a guest that way. In the Leviticus passage, where it talks about the abomination, the whole chapter is about how a man in charge of the community, in charge of the household, should treat the people who live in the household. In the day and time when the Hebrew scripture was written, we believe that co-housing was the norm, that um, patriarch had his children and their spouses and his grandchildren and hangers on all living under the same household. And it, the whole scripture is about how this patriarch needs to be respectful to the people in his household. And so I'm not sure that that leads us to believe that, that this particular act is a sin always and everywhere. Absolutely, when it's imposed on someone, I agree. That's rape. That's not okay in any circumstance. So where does that leave us? Churches hurt people when they select a particular sin, a particular way of living to look down upon. And we continue nationwide to see churches that are imposing this pain. We're seeing our governments impose this pain. And it's to no good purpose. I'm a Wesleyan theologian, and John Wesley taught us of three general rules. And the very first one is first, do no harm. And that one is the one I cling to when I think of what churches have done in the name of Christ to people who are LGBTQIA. And I choose not to do that. And Travis Park Church chooses not to do that. We love you. We want you to be here. Thank you.